Some quick question and answer for the California Surf Fishing Group. Our first question comes from Catherine Pura. She says, heading out tomorrow for halibut, what bait do y'all recommend to start with? Jerk bait or swim baits? My answer to this question, Catherine, is always really simple and always the same. And that is, if the water is clean, fish the Battlestar 115. If the water's a mess, fish the XLS. I'm talking about the extra long shank weighted swim bait hook with the Battlestar 5 inch rib bait. The jerk bait is the go-to bait. It's got the most action, it, it vibrates, it creates a reaction bite, the fish can find it. The problem is it's covered in hooks. So if the water's dirty with little bits of eelgrass and kelp, that tends to get caught on the hooks and foul up your bait. So if you're fishing with a jerk bait and you're just pulling up seaweed, that's gonna foul your bait, you're not gonna catch any fish, and then it's time to go weedless. The Battlestar 115 was designed specifically for halibut fishing around those rocks and that vegetation where there tends to be kelp and eelgrass, and that does tend to make the water dirty and a real challenge for fishing. So when the water is really clean, like after some really calm swell, if you get a few days in a row where the waves are really small consistently, you can then predict that the water is probably going to be clean. And then you can just go ahead and tie on that 115 and start fishing and check and see. Is the water clean or am I fouling up on seaweed? If you are fouling up on seaweed, then it's time to switch over to that Battlestar XLS extra long shank weighted swim bait hook with the Battlestar 5 inch rib bait. And the reason these are superior in the surf is because you'll notice the extra long shank allows us to put the weight further back on the bait. And as a result, this bait is acting like a parachute as it sinks and it tends to sink horizontally Whereas other Texas rig designs or other swim baits with jig heads, they put all the weight up front and then they tend to no vertically nosedive and hit bottom like this. And with your line up here, it tends to get snagged into the rocks a lot more frequently and you tend to lose a lot more rigs. That snagged really good. And this is, has the bullet weight on the front, so it's, it's more inclined to snag. With these baits, they actually sink horizontally if you keep your rod tip up that nose will be pointed up a little bit and they just tend to get snagged way less i mean way way less anyone who has experience using the battlestar xls weighted swim bait hook with the battlestar five inch rib bait or any swim bait for that matter can tell you yeah these things just don't get snagged as much and so it's a great advantage to use the extra long shank weighted swim bait hook also these battlestar five inch rib baits they feature a rib through groove design which allows you to bury the hook tip under a couple of these ribs and keep it directly in the middle right in in the in the groove where you would want it to be so this thing is perfectly balanced and it has the same design on the bottom so after you've expired those ribs you've broken them you can just take the hook out spin it 180 degrees and put it right back in the bait and bam you're ready to start fishing again with a whole nother set of rib through groove on the bottom side. So like I said, if the water is clean, fish the Battlestar 115. If the water is a mess, tie on that XLS with the Battlestar 5 inch rib bait. Moving on with our next question and answer from the California Surf Fishing Group. This one comes from member Joe So. He says, I'm going to the best spot this weekend for halibut surf fishing. Hopefully some new scent on the Battlestar 115 attracts a legal fish. Spinning reel or bait casting reel? That's the question. Joe, so spinning reel, bait casting reel, totally up to you, man. Whichever you prefer to use is fine. I prefer a spinning rod, especially when casting lightweight lures like the three quarter ounce Battlestar 115 jerk bait. The spinning reel is just so easy to cast and there's no, you'll never have any issues with backlash. Um, if you're able to fish as light as three quarter ounce with a bait casting reel and rod, then you can go ahead and do that. Just make sure that your rod has the right action for the application. So if you're gonna be halibut fishing, I'd recommend a medium heavy rod, like the Daiwa North Coast medium heavy nine foot rod. This rod has the perfect action and power for halibut fishing. It's also very sensitive. Yeah, I can feel the bottom. And this is why you want a stiff rod for swim baiting. Yeah. With your rod tip straight up, I can feel that swim bait grazing across rocks. And when I feel it grazing over pebbles and rocks, I'm gonna give it a pop. Yeah. Make sure I don't snag. They do make the blank available as a spinning rod or a bait casting rod, so you can experiment with those. I love the spinning rod, though. I can't say enough good things about it. As far as putting scent on a Battlestar 115 jerkbait goes, 
I've done it a couple times. There's not a whole lot of people who do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Certainly not going to hurt. But I want to say that I've caught 95% of my halibut on jerk baits and swim baits with no scent whatsoever, just the plastic. So, so most of these bites that we're getting in these halibut zones are actually visual and kinesthetic reaction bites. They're seeing it and feeling it and reacting to that, not so much zeroing in on the bait based on the smell. So Joso, what you want to do to get the big halibut to bite is what I always say, slow, low, and steady. Yeah, and with swim baits I do this, see? Rod tip straight up. Yeah. And I'll just slow grind it, and then if, if I ever think there's a potential for a snag or fouling, then I give it a pop. A pop, pop. Just, to get, just so it like shakes off the weed and it yeah. doesn't snag. And I want to go right back to that slow, low, steady grind. So it's, it's kind of a game of trying not to get snagged while also keeping your bait presentable the whole time. You want to crawl your bait slowly along the bottom, steadily. No jerks, no twitches. Let me explain this really quick. Really quick. First of all, I have a record of catching tons of large halibut. Way more legal size halibut in comparison to short sized halibut. Most people will catch a lot of shorts, but not very many keepers. I've been catching more legal size keepers and not very many shorts. My theory is that the short halibut are just like young, sprightly little puppies, and they like to run up and down the beach and chase bait. Whereas the old, big mama halibut, they'll just lay in bed and wait for someone to walk up and hand them a treat. So they're just gonna lay there and ambush anything that cuts right in their face, and it's just a really easy meal. So what you're trying to do is offer that big halibut a really easy meal, a really easy target. I'm here, so I'm just pitching it out and just fishing it really slow and gentle and easy. And the way you're going to do that is get into your halibut zone where you believe there's halibut and then just comb that whole spot like every six feet make a cast because you don't know what the structure looks like out there of course the longer you spend fishing that zone you come back fish it again and again and again and again you're going to get more familiar with the hard structure and more familiar with what the soft structure is doing because every time a storm comes through it can move the sand around but the rocks aren't going to move at least not the reef rock that's actually stuck in the ground, the bedrock. The round, smaller, surf-tumbled rocks can get moved around. The sand definitely moves around, but the reef stays the same. <clears throat> so if you're fishing the same spot over and over, you're gonna get intimately familiar with all of its details. And you're gonna know what's going on out there. And then you'll know, I like to put in a few extra casts right here because there's a drop-off, or there's a big sandy patch surrounded by kelp, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't really know what's going on out there regardless on any day of the week. So go ahead and comb the whole zone. If it's a small area, you might as well put in a cast every six feet to see if you get a bite. Stay on the move till you find them. But if you know there's like a really good hot spot, you might want to just make a few extra casts there, put in some extra time right there. So what you really want to do is just drag that baby slow, low, and steady on the bottom. And that's all there is to it. You don't want to do twitches and, and jerks because you're just taking it away from the fish. If I'm a halibut, I'm laying on the bottom and I'm waiting for an easy meal. I want something to come so slowly right in front of me or even bounce me in the head and just crawl along. He can't say no. He has to bite that thing, you know? So you want to give him an easy meal, slow, low, and steady, drag it on bottom. That has worked for me. It, I know it'll work for you. Just go out and do that over and over and over and you will catch some really nice halibut along the way. All right, guys, I think that's all the tips I can give you today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you appreciate this sort of thing, you can support Vince Goes Fishing and the California Surf Fishing Group uh, just by enjoying the very fine quality products that we are releasing. California Surf Fishing sweatshirts, t-shirts, long sleeves, sun jerseys, and all the fine Battlestar Tackle products. Again, I made these jerk baits specifically for surf fishing, halibut. It turns out they work great for perch and striper also. You're going to love the Battlestar 115, no question about it. You can also get replacement treble hooks, so you always have a nice, strong, sharp hook on your bait at all times. Get those Battlestar 5-inch uh, rib baits with the extra long shank weighted swim bait hooks. Best swim baits for halibut fishing in the surf. So if you've got these on deck, it's pretty much all you need, unless you're going perch fishing. We'll talk about that on another episode. And please come join our California Surf Fishing group on Facebook, California Surf Fishing CSF. Also, I want to let you guys know you can get your very own free California Surf Fishing sticker. And if you want to get that, just head over to casurfishing.com. In the menu, you'll find a link for the free sticker form. Go ahead and fill that out. You're subscribing to our email list. 
And in return, we're gonna send you a free California surf fishing sticker in the mail. And then you'll receive email updates with videos like this one, tips on how to master your surf fishing, and also fishing reports from all of our members. You'll see pictures of all the great fish that are being caught along the California coast. I hope you appreciate all the hard work I put into all this stuff. And I thank you for your support. See you in the group. I love spending time in the group. I love talking about surf fishing all day long. So please come ask your questions and share your fishing reports. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching Vince Goes Fishing. Come ask your questions and share your fishing reports in our Facebook group, California Surf Fishing CSF. This episode is brought to you by Battlestar Tackle. Ask your local tackle shop for Battlestar Tackle.